Okay, let's do a walkthrough on a site survey. This is a rental property that the owner um, rents out uh, on a contractual basis, and but she wants to know the perimeter is secure. So she wants a solution on the perimeter, nothing on the interior. So let's take a look and see how we would uh, design a system like this. And you'll notice the walkthrough at most only takes 10 minutes. Most of the time, the rest of the walkthrough is building confidence with the customer, asking questions, showing interest in the home, showing interest in what they want, discussing their concerns, those kinds of things. But the actual design, maybe 10 minutes. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we want to do is find a starting point. And so I usually start at the front of the home and I usually start from my right side. So this over here is the obvious point for me to consider cameras and the coverage that they'll provide. So let's start over here at this corner. Now one thing I noticed right off the bat from looking at the front of this home is I have attic space up here in the garage. You can see the vent. We see the tall gables up here and the gables over here. And you can tell just by looking at the house there's attic from one side of the house over to the other. Now, we might have to work through some things, but that's gonna make the installation really easy. We're gonna be able to wire this entire house right from the attic. Okay, so the first location that uh, pops out to me is, is really needing some coverage is right on the corner of the building. Now, this is how we bore side or eyeball a camera. We go stand right below where the camera's gonna go. We hold our arms out at a 90 degree angle. The, my arms represent the left and the right maximum field of view of the camera. So I can see if I put a camera right here, I'm gonna see right down the garage and I'm going to be able to see straight out to the street. And so this field of view is what I'm gonna get with this camera. The camera's gonna cover a lot of ground. The street's only about 35, 40 feet out. So I'm well within the 60 foot mark. So I know that I can use a wide angle uh, lens on the camera and I don't have to go with any expensive cameras. If I want to adjust the field of view, I just do this. What if I aim the camera this way? Well, now I'm gonna see over here, I'm gonna lose some area over here that's gonna create a blind spot that you could walk right up to the side and disable the camera. So I would rotate the camera's field of view around till we eliminate that blind spot. Now I'm not worried about someone coming up behind me because we're not done with the design. Now the next location we want to consider is the porch area here. The client mentioned that they would want two-way communication to be able to communicate with people that come to the door. It, that, that idea replaces the ring video doorbell. You don't have to mess with your doorbell. You put the camera up here in the corner and we're going to use this corner here because it's going to cover this area here on the porch but it's also going to give us view into the front yard there and which will be at the far end of the field of view of the camera that we just looked at on the garage. So these two cameras will give you an effective view of your front yard area. Now one thing I do is I carry a, a binder with me and I did a quick design of the house and you can see it's really technical. But the point is I understand this design. There's the front door, here's the garage and the rest of the house. Now as I walk through and I select camera areas, I just do two things. I mark a location where the camera is, the area it's gonna cover and the maximum distance it needs to see. Same thing with the porch. I put a, a camera right there, it's gonna view this way. I'm gonna put a porch right here so I know I use a porch cam here and the distance it's going to see. This helps me when I go back to the office to do the design. In my head, I'm the one that designed this so I understand it. You can also just take pictures of the areas that you're going with your phone. Take pictures as you go around the house. It does the same thing. It reminds you of the locations and the distances. But this is a real effective way for me just to collect information quick so that I can get to the office and do the design. Now we're on the other end of the home. The other natural place I would look at to put a camera is right there. I got two things going on though. That tree there is gonna grow and eventually it's going to be a problem. But I don't feel I need a camera here because I've got the garage camera over there covering that area. I've got the porch camera covering this area. The porch camera, me standing right here is going to see me. There's no real easy way in. There's no window well uh, windows or anything that worries me for security purposes. So I'm going to uh, eliminate this location as a camera simply because I don't think it's needed. Now we're on the west side of the home 
and uh, this is a good natural spot for another camera. Mounting right under the sofa right here, we're going to get the field of view all the way down the home and then 90 degrees out this way to the street. So we're gonna get a lot of use out of this camera right here. The reason I'm doing it, you don't have windows here, but we have window wells. And I don't like window wells because they give a place for an intruder to jump down. They're protected from normal view. When they break the window, because it's sub ground, it has a tendency to suppress the sound. So this is definitely an area we wanna put a camera. There's a really good chance the HOA is going to be using your camera on a, on a weekly basis to identify cars that are coming up and then down this entry point as well. Now we're at the back of the home. And real quickly, looking at the back of the home, it's not that big of an area, but it does require three cameras for 100% coverage. First, we've got this window well here. So I have a tendency to want to put a camera on this inside corner right here. So this inside corner is going to cover this area here. So I've got all of this opened up and I like that because the main drive and the sidewalk that the public can come right over that little hill and they're right into the backyard. So we want good coverage over here. But this camera here will cover all of this, watch the window well and watch the back of the camera that's looking down the west side of the, the home. Now, as we come over here, we have a patio area that we'd like some coverage. We have two entry points going into the home. So the easy thing to do here is to come up in the corner, place another camera right in the corner, just covering the patio area, the two entry doors, and again, the mid of the lawn and the small hill going out to the street is all covered here. Now, one more camera for the back. And that's because again, here we have a window well right here. So on the other side, just like we did on the other side, I have a tendency to want to put a camera right at this location right here with the field of view here. That takes care of the window well, takes care of anyone approaching from this area, and it takes care of anyone coming over this little hill directly down into your backyard. And we don't want them to have an access to that without being detected. So this is the last camera for uh, the backyard. All of the, the target points are under 60 feet. So I know I can use wide angle cameras on the entire perimeter. Now we're on the east side of the home. And again, we've got two window wells that are a concern, and this is really a blind spot in between the two homes. So we want to put a camera right on this corner, covering this entire alleyway between the two homes. It'll take care of the window wells here. Now we do have one window very close to the camera right here. I mean, it could go into their bedroom for all I know. So what we want to do when we mount the camera, it's going to have a wide angle lens, and that's fine, but what we're going to do is we're gonna go into programming and we're gonna mask that window out so it's just a blank on the video. We'll even let the neighbor next door know that camera cannot see into your windows. We physically made sure that that part is blanked out so that there's no privacy issues. But by doing that, we've got this part covered and now we have 100% of this home covered with wide angle cameras, cost-effective design. So now all we have to do that we've collected this information, go back to the office, pull up the system designer, uh, type in the address and start laying the right cameras in based on our walkthrough here. Now we're back at the office and now we can start the design with our design tool. So the first thing you do is go to our website, Backstreet Surveillance, and you go to how to and under design tools, you'll see DIY system designer. So we go to that. This takes you to this tool. Click Get Started, and we're gonna do a new design. First thing we do is we can, uh, we can import an image, but today we're just going to type in an address um, and have uh, Google Maps pull up the image on Google Maps. It's much easier and it's a quick way to get things done. Okay, now we've got the overhead view of the property pulled up. This is the residence right here that we're doing the design for. And we're gonna use the ProView system on this design. It's a good residential system and it's, it's uh, the best value for dollars spent. So we're gonna start with a Pro90D. That's a 4K camera. And um, 
I'm going to put this on this front corner here like we discussed earlier. And I'm just going to indicate the field of view that the camera is going to provide. We know it's a 90 degree because it's a 3.6 millimeter and we know that its effective range is up to 60 feet. Now we know that past 60 feet it's going to see just fine, but I'm just going to show the field of view in the areas where we know for sure we're going to get facial ID. That's that area there. Now we want to add a porch camera for the porch area. So we type it in over here and we get it here. Now I'm going to change the color on this camera so that the fields of view don't overlap with the red and cause confusion. And I'm going to swing it around and I'm going to flip the image and I'm going to turn the image a little bit. We're going to take that porch camera. I'm going to put it right up under here under the porch. Now that camera is going to see right down the porch area. It's going to see the entire porch and then it's going to come out to the edge and then provide this field of view out in the yard with the rest of the field of view. The house is blocking. There's a little jet right here that blocks this field of view, but the rest of this is accurate. So there's your, there's your porch camera put right underneath the porch. Let's move this down here. Now, uh, the rest of the house, we're going around the back. The distances are pretty small. I'm going to use a 3K camera to save some money for the customer. So we type in 3K here and we'll go ahead and use um, let's see, let's use a Pro 60 VW. And I'm going to change that color of that camera so that it doesn't mess with the other fields of view either. We talked about putting one camera right there. Now this field of view for this camera is going to reach up to this area here and it's going to shoot right down the west side of the, the residence covering this area right here. Okay. That'll take care of that guy. Yes, we're asking it to go a long range, but the camera will do just fine in 3K and we'll have facial ID at, at 60 feet, no problem. Now the next location is around the back and the back is fairly vulnerable because of a main street that comes through and anyone from the sidewalk can come right over the hill, right into their backyard, which is pretty private and you can't be seen from the road. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to use these 3K cameras. We're gonna put one on the inside corner right here and we're gonna rotate that image and we're going to make it a different color. And we know that it opens up at a 90 degree field of view. So it's going to cover this area and it's going to come out this way. And the 60 foot pattern is going to view something to that effect right there. Now we're going to continue on with the 3K camera. We're going to put another one right here covering this area here. And if you'll recall, there's a, uh, a window well right here. So that's a concern for us. So we're going to cover that area with that guy right there. And the field of view, 60 feet, should show something like that. And let's go ahead and turn that into a green as well. Okay, now the problem is we've got a porch area right here, um, not a porch, but a, a, a deck area or a patio. And so we do want that covered. That is up under the eaves, so that camera is going to be up under uh, the overhang there, and it's going to cover this area, and it's going to reach out into the field of view that's kind of missing uh, from the other two cameras. So it's going to see something similar to this area here. And I would try and do this with two cameras instead of three, but I just can't see it because of the way the backyard is designed and the backyard is the most vulnerable with this system. So we're going to go ahead and change that. And so now we've got 100% coverage in the back. We have facial ID all the way around here where anyone would move. The only blind spot left is on the, the east side of the home, the right side of the home. And again, we're going to use another 3K camera there. We're going to mount that bad boy right there. Its job is to cover down this area here. 
and it opens up at a 90 degree angle and we know that it just comes straight down to this area so we can just move these things over here and that is an accurate field of view for that camera. Now let's look at our design. If you walk up the front or anyone messes with the vehicles, you've got a 4K camera here seeing what's going on. If someone's moving up or down the street, you're going to get the vehicles and the plates likely. Right about this point here is where you'll get the plates of the, of the angle of this camera. When people walk up to the porch, you've got the porch camera that identifies them and sends you an alert to your phone and you have two-way communication with them here. The porch camera is also going to reach out into the, into the yard area and provide additional coverage for this area here. As you come around the house, we've got this camera in the back corner here covering all of this area here. And we have two window wells there of concern and that's why we want that camera. Now we put this camera on the inside corner looking out because first we wanna watch this camera's back. We don't want someone to be able to come up this way, disable this camera and then go into the window wells. So having this camera here, you can't approach this camera and disable it because this will document you. This opens up at a 90 degree angle. It covers this area here. So anyone coming in from the street over the hill is gonna be identified and it protects this window well here. As you come around the corner, there's a couple of pillars here and here that creates blind spots. So this camera here is really just for the patio area. It covers your grill, the two entry points into the home and up the hill and it covers this area here so you don't have a blind spot. Right next to that, we have a camera looking east. Again, we have a window well right here. The camera opens up at 90 degrees. We've got 60 foot pattern out into here. The small area here, again, we used a wide angle lens. It's effective area is 60 feet. So we're more than comfortable identifying people that come into here. This camera will document anyone coming up from this angle and trying to disable this camera. Um, and the focus will just be the sliver of area in between the two homes. The, the neighbor has a window right here. When that camera is installed, that window will be blanked out so that the camera cannot see into the window and we keep the neighbor's privacy and everyone's happy. So there you have 100% coverage of a residential design, total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cameras. Uh, I feel I might have been able to do it with six cameras, but this back area here is important not to have any dead spots because you can come in straight from the street and people can't see you once you come over this small hill. That is 100% coverage for this residence. Now we're ready to move on and do the quote portion based on this design. So now we simply save the design we can type in the address, the customer name, the equipment list, and let's just do test, and let's do test. And you can select the sales rep that's doing this design, and then you can save it. Now that, will, that packages everything, saves it, and now you have a PDF of this design uh, with the cameras, the locations, the fields of view. This is the visual that the customer is going to use to understand why and how we put cameras in certain locations. It's your visual to explain to them your recommendations. And then on top of that, you'll have your line item quote, which we'll move on to next.